Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Bhavik Joshi. Welcome to this channel by Says Dentistry. And let's discuss a case that I came across today. Hello everyone, let's discuss this case that I came across today. So this lady came to me for regular checkup and on checking up I found out this inflammation present between this first molar and the second premolar in the interdental papillary region. Now as this uh, first molar was root canal treated and had this crown over it. I thought it may be the reason. Maybe there is some infection in that area. Uh, let's get the IOPA done. So I got this IOPA done and as I had thought of, there is this periapical lesion present uh, in relation to this mesial root. And obviously there is the reason also behind this. There is this short obturation present uh, along with the mesial root. Okay, so at this point I have made the diagnosis that this first molar is the culprit because it is uh, not treated properly. But anyways, let's see the whole uh, extent of the lesion. Let's see how much or how big the lesion is. Alright, so I get the second IOPA done and I found this. You can see this uh, completely round radiolucency and has this periapical radiolucency with this corticated borders which are present. So at this point my diagnosis is periapical cyst and the reason being this secondary infection which has taken place from the first molar. Alright, there is nothing much uh, pathological thing that we can see in this second premolar except for this uh, radio opacity in this area most probably uh, due to the class 5 composite which is done here. Alright. So anyways, uh, just to be sure whether the radiolucency is uh, originating from the secondary infection due to undertreated or previously left behind infection from the first molar or as I can see a radiolucency is in this area, this vertical area. So it could be a root fracture as well in the first molar molar in the mesial root. So to be sure I got the CBCT done. All right. Coming to CBCT, this is the image I get as expected. This lucency is there and as we see the sections in this CBCT, uh, my focus is completely at this point on the first molar to find out whether the crack is there or not. So if I see this section, particular section, we can see this vertical lines of radiolucency present in this slice number 18. So because there was this pre uh, assumption in my mind that this uh, first molar is culprit and I wanted to rule out any cracks. So this is giving me an idea that indeed there is a vertical root fracture in the first molar and uh, that is the culprit behind the this periapical cyst. But as I go Further, I see this radiolucency in the second premolar. So as we see, this second premolar has a radiolucency which has involved almost whole of the cusp. Right? So this uh, clicks that, okay, it could be the second premolar as well. And this vertical lines that we are seeing are in fact the artifacts which are arising from this metallic crown which is present on the tooth end some part of the canal which are not filled okay so this is but still the information was not that much concluding what if even this lucency that we are seeing here in 20 and 21 they are also you know uh, artifacts because of this molar okay so i decided to decided to see this uh, case in detail so when we see this again this image we can see this radiolucency here but of course, this lucency is visible here in the second premolar. And when we see the second premolar in this coronal section, let's see this the bigger slide. As you can see, there is this radiolucency uh, caries which has involved almost whole of the crown structure which is present underneath the enamel. Enamel is almost intact, right? Below this, there is this dentinal caries which has involved the pulp and that is the most probable reason for this periapical cyst which is arising from the periapical region of the second premolar 
and it has spread towards the first molar region. As we can see here, this is where the cyst is starting and you can see it has increased in size. So if you see in detail, there is this resorption present in the uh, mesial root of the first molar as well. And of course, this periapical cyst has involved the inferior lunar nerve completely. If you, if you see that in 3D section, it gives you more visual idea. As you can see, this lucency is so big that it is involving the inferior nerve canal region. Right? And as it was visible in the IOP as well, there was this J-shaped radiolucency present in the first molar but not due to the, the vertical root fracture, it is kind of involvement of the periodontal space also, which has taken place through this or because of this periapical lesion. So there are two things that we learn from this case discussion. First, it's always useful to get help of CBCT whenever in doubt. And second, never have pre-assumptions when making a diagnosis just like I had in this case, because from the first point itself, from the clinical examination itself, I had this thing in my mind that the culprit is the first molar. So in the IOPA, in the CBCT, I was looking for the reasons behind this infection in the first molar only. And it came out to be that it's the second premolar which has caused this infection. My treatment plan for this case would be to attempt non-surgical root canal treatment first and then follow up the case uh, and see how it goes. If required, later on we can do the apisectomy and enucleation. But for now, I'll be going ahead with the non-surgical root canal treatment because it is proven that in the periapical cyst cases, we can treat the condition with the non-surgical root canal treatment only. That I'll be doing for the second premolar. And for the first premolar, we'll do the re-root canal treatment to make sure that there is no involvement by the mesial root. If you have any queries regarding this case or if you have any other treatment opinion that you would like to share, let me know in the comment section and make sure to subscribe the channel and share this video with your friends for more such cases.